Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 14 of Objective C on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to use the init method in Objective C, but more specifically how to override it in your own classes so that you can initialize instance variables um, right up front. So um, this basically um, for the past few tutorials, I've I've talked about classes, how to create your own class, um, just the general outline of how classes work in um, Objective-C. I've talked about some um, just classes that we use all the time, as such as NSString, NSArray that are in the foundation framework. Um, just a bunch of different classes that we've uh, talked about that are important. And now we're going to get into more of the syntax and the more important things of Objective-C. And the init method is one of those because um, there's actually so much you can do with it, and um, you'll probably under by the by the end of this tutorial you'll see how powerful um, you changing the, your own or making your own init method, or I should say overriding the init method in your own classes can be. So usually when we create a new object, we would call or we would um, make it a rectangle object, and then we call alloc init to that class. So rectangle alloc init. And after we do that, that would create a new object, and then after that we would start going, okay, rect, set, height, and then you get the idea. We'd set the width, and then we'd print the object out, and it would have that all that initialized for us. And that would work, but um, what I want to show you today is how you can change the init method in your own class to do that for you. So you don't have to always um, use the set height and set width, because that... Um, isn't always the greatest way because, I mean, you can forget stuff completely. So the init method to override that is always important to do if you have instance variables in your class. So uh, let's get started here with how to do this. So, um, of course, we're working with our rectangle class. And the important thing to know is that init is a method of NS object Because every time we call the init method, it looks at our rectangle class and says, okay, do you have the init method in your class? It looks at it and says no, because we've never overridden the init method. Then it goes up the hierarchy, and from our rectangle class, our super class is NS object. And so therefore, it looks at NS object and says, okay, do you have the init method? Yes, you do, so we're going to run your init method. So what we want to do is uh, basically stop it from getting to NS object, or at least right away. So we want it to look at our rectangle um, init method first, and we want it to do the stuff in our rectangle init method instead. And so this that's pretty much what this tutorial is, and you'll see how this works. So since NS object is the one that made the init method, we never made the init method. It's not a it's not specific it's not specific to the rectangle class. So our at interface doesn't have to um, we don't have to write the init method down here because it's not part of our rectangle class. It's already part of the NS object class, and it's not something new that we're bringing to the rectangle class. So instead, we're just going to leave it out, and we're going to head over to our at implementation in our rectangle class. So now, there's a lot of new things to learn here and a lot to absorb, but um, it's actually, once you just get the syntax down, it's quite simple. So the init method looks like this, and our return type, um, you probably don't know what it is, and that's because um, we're returning an object, because think about it, when we call the init method in our main program, it, allo it allocates space for it, and then that object goes to init, and init will return the object to what our object name is. So um, basically, what we have to do in our init method is we have to return an object type. Well, how do we do that in Objective-C? Well, um, since the init method can be used by so many different classes and it can return so many different things, we uh, return different objects depending. So, um, what the general object type is in Objective-C is called ID. And ID just stands for a generic object. And you can actually create a generic object in uh, your code, and you can use it in certain ways. But uh, we'll get into that a lot more later. But in essence, we are just want to return an object. So we want to return ID, because we aren't specific on what object we return, because the init method 
could be overridden by any class. So we're not specific on what class we're going to be returning. We're just going to be returning an object. So that's out of the way, and we'll move on here. And of course, we'll be talking more about ID in the future. Um, so don't think it's a one-time thing and you learned everything now because there's so much more to do with um, the ID type. But it just, again, it just means you're returning an object. So now, um, this is generally the most um, painful part for people, just trying to understand how this works. So, but I don't think it's actually that hard. So what we want to do is there's uh, one thing, one other thing we have to learn here is that there's something um, in Objective-C called the self keyword or the um, self just refers to the class that you're in. So for example, if I call self in my rectangle class, I'm just referring to myself, which is the class that I'm in. So if I call self, I'm just, re I'm just referring to the class that I'm in, which is rectangle. If I want to reference, um, let's say height, my height instance variable, I could just say self.height. And as you can see, it recognizes that height is in my self-contained object because self is again the rectangle class and we have height and width in that class. So as you can see, self, all that self means is that it's talking about the object that you're in or the class that you're in, which is the rectangle class. So self just refers to what you are inside at the time. So, what are we going to do with this? Well, um, the important thing to re remember is that we don't have to just initialize the rectangle class. We have to initialize everything above it. So let's say, just for um, example, we have a rectangle class, and it's the subclass of a shapes class. So shapes class is the super class. And then super or the super class of the shapes class would be NS object, for example. So Let's say the shapes class has um, a, maybe a string and it just has a color attached. So maybe it has a string called fill color. And we have to initialize that string because if we don't, it's going to be left blank. So how do we run the init method of the classes above us in the hierarchy? So um, we have to always initialize the super class of what we're inside. So how we do this is a simple thing we call the super keyword, which just means it goes up in the hierarchy to the super class, and, uh, or the parent class, whatever you want to call it. And the super class will call its init method, and then it will return the object that it returns from that class. So for example, um, our rectangle class right now, it references NS object, or it's, it's the, um, and this object is the super class of the rectangle class. So when I call NS object, I want to initialize whatever it has or whatever it has to do. And for any other class that is a super class of my class or the class that I'm in, so if rectangle is the subclass of any other class, I need to initialize everything that's above it. So I'm just going to always call super in it, and that will just keep initializing. Um, until it gets to the top level and it doesn't have anything else to initialize. So super init will initialize the object above it, it will return the object to self, and now our self object has everything initialized from the classes above. So if our rectangle class was a subclass of the shapes, and shapes was a subclass of the NS object, then our NS object would be initialized, and our shapes class would be initialized, and now we have that object. We have everything initialized in our class right now. So that's, um, it's kind of a techie sort of uh, way to think of things, but it's not really, it's just what you have to do if you just have to initialize the classes above you. And um, I mean, if what, you don't really have to remember why, even if you don't care to. Uh, if you just want to remember that you have to say self gets super init, then um, you're good with that. So now, um, now comes the if statement part of this where um, if super init fails, so if it doesn't return an object, which um, doesn't happen very often obviously, but if you run out of memory or something or something goes wrong in the process, um, it will return nil, which basically means, as we know, nil means um, it's just a null object, it just doesn't exist. So if it returns nil, that means the object never got initialized, and that means um, our memory something went wrong in the memory. So what this if statement does for us is says, okay, is the self object initialized? Does it did it get the object above it basically? And if it didn't, then it's not going to run this code. 
and it's going to get rid of itself basically. If we, uh, if it does, if it does um, contain a reference to an object, so if it did get initialized from all the super classes above it, then we're going to execute this code. And here we go. So now this is the easy part. We just say height gets six, and we can say um, even uh, width, I was just forgetting the other instance variable, width gets four, and now that's all we really had to do. And now, of course, we have to return the object that we had. So return, and now we just return self, because that's our object in our class. So after all this is done, we have initialized every class above us, and then it returns that object to self, and self now has all the objects above it initialized in essence. Then it checks to see if self is um, an object, or if it didn't get uh, the objects above it. If it doesn't, it's not going to initialize itself, and it's uh, going to return nil. In other words, the object isn't going to get created. So it's uh, kind of a safety mechanism, I guess. And then we just assign our height and our width different values. So um, there's also another way to do this. If you don't want to have, um, if you don't want to set it up this way, um, I'm generally going to set it up another way, which is taking this out entirely and just putting the whole thing in the if statement, which just cuts off a line and it, it just does the same thing as previous. So we call super init, and if self is an object, then it will it will um, run the code below it. If it gets returned nil, then it won't run. So that's in essence what uh, I'm going to do here. So now our init method is done, we have initialized height and width, and now our object is initialized with all the values, so we don't have to call set height and set width in our um, program anymore. So now let's go back to the lesson 14 code, and let's print this out. So now our rect object is calling its init method, because it looks at the rectangle class first, and it's going to say, okay, do you have the init method? Yes, you do, and we're going to run your init method. So now let's see what happens. So we're going to print out the object, rect, and build and run. And let's check the console. And as you can see, rect height is 6 and our width is 4. And there's so much more you can do with the init method, but unfortunately we're out of time. So um, anyway, this is just a brief overview of the, how to use the init method in Objective-C to initialize the variables inside of your um, class. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or send me a message if you have further comments or questions. Anyway, I'll see you next tutorial.